I am hard, but I am fair. You little scumbag, you will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Now get up. Get on your feet. Holy smokes. I forgot how intense that guy was. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. So today we're gonna to take it down a couple of notches and not be a drill instructor, but be a drill inspector. I've got a quick and easy upgrade for the drill press that should take less than an hour. So let's get started with this build. So today's video is really gonna be a simple little build. All you're gonna need is a little bit of plywood and a few magnets. The other nice thing about this project is you can customize it to any dimensions that you want. So what is this project? Well, let's go over to the drill press and talk about it. So most drill presses right out of the box come with a small little cast iron table. And this thing is really hard to work with if you're dealing with larger pieces of wood. So we're gonna try to maximize this table and make it a little bigger. If we take a look at my current table, it's only six and a half inches wide by seven and three quarter inches long. Now I've built a couple of drill press tables in the past and I've even added things like fences to give me a little bit more versatility. And I know that fences can allow you to do a lot of repetitive drilling without making many adjustments. The problem is I can probably count on one hand how many times I've used my drill press fence. And a lot of times, instead of helping, it just gets in the way. The other thing about my past drill press tables is they were always secured to the cast iron table with a couple of screws. So they were very difficult to remove. So I wanted to create a drill press table that I could easily add to the drill press or remove without a whole lot of effort. And that's what we're gonna build today. So let's go over to the assembly table and start laying this out. So as I said before, there's really not a whole lot of material involved in this project. We're gonna use a piece of three quarter inch plywood along with four one inch rare earth magnets. We also might use a couple of strips of hardwood to pretty it up in the end. So the first thing that we wanna do is to determine the actual dimensions of the table. And this is the part that's completely customizable. You can make this table any size that you want. So let's go over to the drill press and figure out what our dimensions are. So if I go over to the drill press, I just wanna get an idea of how big I want this table. And in this case, I think I wanna go about 15 inches wide and approximately 10 inches deep. So we'll go to the table saw, cut out these dimensions and see how it looks on our drill press. So if I place my test piece on top of my drill press table, this is exactly the size that I'm looking for. So what we need to do now is to make a secondary piece with the exact same dimensions. Now you should be able to use some of your cutoffs to make this piece. As you can see here, this piece is already at 12 inches, so I just need to cut it down to 10 inches. So the next thing that I wanna do is to determine the size of the removable waste board for this table. And for this table, I think I wanna go about three inches wide on the waste board. So let's go cut out some three inch strips. So since these waste boards are replaceable, I wanna cut out a number of these pieces. I've already set a stop block at three inches exactly on my miter saw. So I'm gonna cut out about three or four of these waste boards. So if we go back to our tabletop, you can see how our waste boards will slide right into this top piece of plywood. And then once it gets beat up, we can replace it with another piece. So what we need to do next is find the exact center of the top piece of plywood. Now this doesn't have to be exactly precise as we'll be cutting off the waste in the end. Now for this, I'm gonna use a center scale ruler. Now this is a really expensive one and there's a lot of cheaper ones out there. So I'll leave links in the description for this one and some cheaper ones. Since we're going half of 15 inches, that's right at seven and a half inches on either side. So I'll strike a line right at the zero mark. After that, I can carry my line across the board. Once I've done that, I'll center my board so that the line intersects with the center of the blade. I'll lock down my fence and make the cut. The next step is I've placed the bottom side of the table as well as one of the waste boards and I've struck a line at the exact center of each of those boards. We're gonna use those lines for alignment purposes. Those lines will allow us to make sure that the waste board is directly in the center of the tabletop when we go to laminate the sides. So what we'll do now is we'll place some double-sided tape on the very center of this board. With the backing removed, we now can take our waste board and directly align those two centers. With the waste board in place, we can now laminate the two sides of the tabletop. When we glue it up, we wanna make sure that we don't have too much glue close to the waste board as we don't want any glue squeeze out.
With it all glued up, we can now remove the waste board and make sure that there's no squeeze out in the seams. Now to expedite this glue up process a little bit, I'm gonna pre-drill and countersink four screws onto each side of this table. This is something that definitely does not need to be done. So now that we have the basic frame of the table built, it's now time to place it on the drill press and see how it fits. Once we have it on the drill press, we're gonna take the table that's currently on the drill press and trace it on the very bottom of this table. So let's do that next. So as you can see, this table fits very nicely on the drill press. We still have the two wings on either side that we're gonna cut off at the very end. What we wanna do now is to trace this cast iron table onto the bottom of this table. So let's do that next. So what this tracing will do is it allows us to provide a support lip to cradle that cast iron table. This will allow us to easily slide this drill press table on and off to that cast iron table. Now you should have some scrap that can easily be used for that support lip. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to glue that support lip on and put a couple of screws in it. So now that we have the lip installed, let's go over to the drill press and see how it fits on that cast iron table. And as you can see, it fits very nicely on that cast iron table and slides easily into place. So now let's talk about these magnets. These rare earth magnets are what are gonna hold this table securely into place on that cast iron table. So what we need to do is we need to find the appropriate Forstner bit that will be just a little bit larger than that magnet. And in this case, it's one and a quarter inches wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place each one of the four magnets in a corner. I wanna make sure that each one of these magnets will intersect with that cast iron table. Once I have them into place, I'll trace each one. Now that I have these circles traced, I then can take a Forstner bit and drill out each one of those circles. So now that I have my one and a quarter inch Forstner bit installed, I'm just gonna bore out a little bit on each one of these circles. So now that we have the four holes drilled out so that the magnets will sit completely flush with the bottom of this table, I'm now going to take some CA glue and attach each one of these magnets. And I'm really going to load it up with CA glue here. So now that we have those four magnets installed, it's really just a matter of cleaning this thing up and making it look just a little nicer. But before we do that, let's go slide this onto the drill press table and see how it fits. And as you can see, this table slides very nicely onto that cast iron and it's got a little bit of resistance from those magnets. So the only things left to do is to cut off each one of the wings on the side and I'll do that over at the miter saw and then I'll put a border on it just to clean it up a bit. So now that I have the table all sized up, I'm simply going to grab a couple of scraps here that are cut off from previous projects and just put a small border around the edges. So I've cut down those scraps to size, so I'm just going to use a little bit of wood glue and some bandy clamps to attach the borders to this table. So after letting the glue set up in those clamps for a couple of hours, you can now see that I have a nice mahogany border. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hand sand this and then I'm going to take some Danish oil to finish it off. So I did want to mention that I did take a Sharpie and sort of blacken out the very bottom lip of this table. That's because I didn't have any scraps that were wide enough to fit the entire width. So that Danish oil isn't going to provide a bunch of protection. However, it is going to bring out that wood color. And that's really all I'm looking for. This is just shop furniture, so it really doesn't matter that much. The only thing left to do is to put this on the drill press and see how it works. So here's the drill press as it comes from the factory. It's got the cast iron table, and that's why we made this new tabletop. With its magnetic base, it slides right into place and is very secure. The other nice thing about this table is we do have some backer boards here that are replaceable once they get marred up. So if this one gets marred up, I can simply take another one and slide it right in. 
Another nice thing about this drill press table is not only is it easy to install, but it's also easy to move. If you need to work with some metals, you can work with a cast iron table, and then once you're done, you can simply reapply the table. Well, I couldn't be more impressed with this new drill press table. This thing only took me a couple of hours, and that's with all of my filming. This thing has all the flexibility and the functionality that I need in my current workshop. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was a fun little build and it's something you can do in an afternoon. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really helps out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.